you will learn how you can connect your local AI model to almost any service using MCP, Model Context Protocol. In this video, I'll give you a real example of this where the MCP server will communicate with all of my nodes to create novel insights, as you can see here. If you follow this method, you can connect your AI to other systems while remaining completely private and secure. So I'm not going to waste your time anymore. Let's get into it. So let's get started on this together. And for this video, I just want you to sit back, relax and take in all of the information because I'm going to be walking you through a lot of different concepts and configurations and you might get excited and want to try this out for yourself. But before you do that, it's really important that you just listen closely to what I'm trying to teach you because it's very easy to get lost in all of this, especially because there are so many different pitfalls here. But I'm going to walk you through all of that today. So let's get started with my local chat AI system that I've set up. And this is a locally hosted system powered by Chainlit, which is a great software development kit for easily creating your own chat UI applications. And these kinds of projects are all going to be listed in the video description. So you don't have to worry about that. You will be able to access this. But for now, it's just good to assume that not only do we host the language model locally, the chat UI will also be available on localhost. So what happens if I try to chat here? Well, let's go and type out hi. And you will actually see that now we get a connection error. And the reason for this is that I have not actually started LM Studio. LM Studio is the program of choice that we'll be using today for our local language model. And the reason for that is because LM Studio will take care of some of the complex logic of making the MCP servers actually work. And the way that it does that is by allowing you to use certain models with what is called tool support. And you see this here too, right? I have to make sure that LM Studio is running, that a model is loaded, but then also that the model supports the OpenAI Chat Completions API format with tools. Now, how exactly tools work is something we'll get to in a bit, but for now, let's just follow these instructions and get a model loaded. So I'm gonna go and open LM Studio. In LM Studio, I can check out the models that I've downloaded locally, and I've tried out a couple different ones for this demonstration today. Now today I'll be using an Obsidian MCP server to change some of my local nodes. And to achieve this, I found that I do need a pretty sizable model. You can see here I've got models of different sizes. I've got MetaLama 8 billion parameters. I've got Ministral and I've got Quen 2.5, 7B and 14B. I'm going to be using this 14 billion parameter model because again, I need it for my use case. But what you need depends a bit on what you're trying to achieve. Now, you can see here that there's a little tool icon, and that means that the model has been trained for tool use. This is very important because if a model is not trained for tool use, it will not be able to call MCP servers. So that's a great way for you to immediately understand which models can be used. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this, and then load it in with a slightly larger context length because I might need more to process all of my notes, but otherwise I'm going to leave the default values and just load the model. But just loading the model is not enough because that just gives me access to the model in the LM Studio chat. I actually want to expose a server. So I'm gonna to go to my developer tools. And then in here, you can already see that the model is ready, but I've not started the actual server. So I'm gonna do that now. And then the local host chat UI can actually access LM Studio properly. And the reason why we even have these separate projects instead of doing everything inside of this chat is because then it's much easier to extend it with not just MCP, but a bunch of other features supported by Chainlit. So now we can go back into that localhost UI and try again. So I'm just going to fully refresh the page and type in hi once more. And you can see that now it's working properly and it is using that 14 billion parameter model. So how about we plug in this model to an MCP server? In this case, I'm going to be using an Obsidian MCP server. I've actually discussed this in a previous video. So again, if you want to learn a complete setup for this, you can refer to that later. But for now, I'm just going to assume a certain setup is already present. And that setup includes, of course, having an Obsidian vault with a couple of nodes. So our goal for today is to basically create links between two nodes they have. So I have nodes on Azure Cloud Infrastructure and Services, and I have some notes about Python and Fast API for AI application development. And my challenge for the AI model is to try and find links between those two different files and create a new Obsidian file with those links included so that I can find some novel insights that I might not have had before. 
it's a great use case that will showcase that the MCP server actually works and is useful for something that actually matters to me personally. So the way that this Obsidian MCP server works is that it relies on a community plugin called Local REST API. So MCP servers are basically a translation layer that take in output from an LLM, output that basically says, hey, I want you to call this tool with these parameters, and then uses regular code to just call an API, in this case, an API on my local Obsidian server. So you can, of course, see that I have an API key in here, but me revealing this in this video doesn't really hurt me because this is not exposed to the internet. So it's actually not really a secret in this case. What I need to do is I need to run a certain command with the API key that is present in here. And if you've not set up this community plugin before and you want to do that, again, videos will be in the description, but for now, let's just follow along and go back to that locally hosted chat UI that I have. In this chat UI, I'm gonna click on this icon here because this allows me to connect to an MCP server. And I'm going to define a new one. I'm going to call it Obsidian. And then the command I'm going to paste is as follows. It starts with the Obsidian API key with the value that you saw before. And then I'm calling UVX MCP Obsidian. I have to explain a bit what UVX actually is. So you can use either UVX commands or NPX commands for chainlet. And this means that you can run both Python-based and Node.js based MCP servers. And UVX is a command that you get when you install UV, which is a very fast and modern Python package and project manager. So that's what we are going to be relying on today. And the reason why this simple command works is because UVX will pull MCP Obsidian from pip and install it automatically and run it for you in the background whenever you start up this chainlet application. And that's all automatic. And the actual MCP server that it will start is an open source MCP server that's defined here. So this is the great open source author that created this MCP server, and it's going to automatically pull in all the code necessary and just start it up whenever this local chat UI is present. So let's go and actually save that command and connect to the MCP server. So here we go. I'm gonna click confirm, and it's adding the MCP right now. And there you go, the MCP is added. And you can immediately see that it works because the tools exposed by the server are present in here, like listing files, getting the file contents, patching, appending content, etc. So that's really great. Now, how does something like this actually work? Well, the thing is, is that whenever you now create a prompt to the AI model, together with your user question, it will send over all of the available tools so that the AI model can potentially choose one of the tools. So for example, let's say that I'm just going to type out hello again. I can actually check the prompt that I'm sending over to LM Studio. So I'm gonna to go to LM Studio right now and I'm going to scroll up and you can see eventually our prompt here. So you can see here that I typed in hello but the more important and interesting part is that you see this tools array. And this tools array is filled with all of those functions from our MCP servers. In this case, we just configured the Obsidian one, but you can see that you could even configure three different ones and it could include all of the functions exposed by those servers. In this case, you see list files in there, you see list files in vault, and you can see here how all of these have a specific type together with parameters. So for example, if we take a look at get file contents, then if the language model thinks this function should be called, well, it should provide a property file path, which is a string that refers to the relevant file. And a language model just simply cannot execute this function on its own, but it can, as output of the language model, recommend one of these functions to be used. So instead of rambling on, I'm going to show you a real example where we are going to call this MCP server to perform that task that I described before, where we're going to link those different nodes together. So I'm going to paste the following prompt. Fetch my Obsidian fault files. You must read each of the files with separate calls carefully and not make up the content yourself. Do not repeat the content of the file to me. So if I execute a user prompt like this, the model is, as you can see, going to execute the method list files in vault. And you can see that it has found these three files, which are indeed present in my Obsidian vault. If we check out the vault again, we've got Azure Cloud Infrastructure, Python and Fast API, and we've got an empty file for Azure Kubernetes service. So it's indeed correct. But now let's see if I can continue and actually read the content of those files. Yes, read all these files. And now it should be calling all their MCP methods as well.
There you go. So it has retrieved the markdown content. And I did that because it used the executing to get file contents, which is great. So that works. And you can see that it did it again for the Azure Kubernetes service file. And it even understands that this file is empty. So you can see here that the language model is quite intelligent, of course. And actually here you can see the format that it uses to actually call the tool. So my code that I've written for this project basically parses whenever there's a tool call syntax like this, and then it will pass this on to the actual MCP server. And that's how the communication effectively works. So you can see here that lastly, it did the same thing for this Python and Fast API file. And now all of that context is actually in the memory of the language model, at least for this conversation. So now that we have all of the text in memory, how about we actually make it think of some links and create a new file based on that? So to achieve that, I've got this prompt where I ask it to create a new file in which it describes the links between the concepts. And then I've got some instructions for how Obsidian node linking actually works and how the uh, bracket syntax works because the language model might know how it works already based on its training data, but it's always good to kind of be explicit with these kinds of instructions. So this will work just fine. Okay, so after a little bit, you can see that the tool result has run and it has appended content to the integration of Azure Cloud Services and AI development file. So while it's still thinking about the advanced techniques and concepts that it wants to link, let's just have a look at the file that it created in the meantime. So in Obsidian, I can actually check out this new file. And you can indeed see that it has created this file, but there's not that much content in it yet, but that's fine. It's still thinking about it. So let's give it a couple more minutes and then come back when it's done. Uh, great, so it seems like it's done with actually appending the content properly. So let's check it Obsidian again to see what it made. So this is great. It looks like we have a full new Obsidian file and it seems like a lot of the linked notes have been created because we can see that there's a lot of this purple underlined text. And for example, AKS refers to that existing but empty Azure Kubernetes service file. So that's really nice. But the main question of course is, are we actually getting some interesting insights here as to how we can combine Azure services together with AI? Well, actually, if we scroll down the document, we have this section on advanced techniques. And you can see that it mentions that we can use vector database integration. We can connect large language models to retrieval systems using Azure Cosmos DB. And this is actually correct because Azure Cosmos DB does have the capability to store vectorized data. And this is important because if you want to extend your AI and make it infinitely smart with gigabytes of data, you need to put that data in an external database that supports vector search. And so it's great that this new node informs us that we can combine Azure Cosmos DB together with AI systems to create a much smarter solution. And so similarly, there's also some links to security best practices, which are mentioned in some of the other documents that have been written before. So for example, if I click through here, you can see that it directly links to the security best practices of the Python and Fast API document. So all in all, I would say this is quite a success and you can see just how well the MCP server works on a completely local system. Now, I do have to be honest and tell you that if you try this out for yourself and use all kinds of different MCP servers, that you will find that your results will vary. Because models that you can run locally simply aren't as smart as the state-of-the-art models that you cannot run on your local PC. That being said though, I also have a community where we help each other out. If you get stuck with any of these implementations, reach out to me in the community that you can find in the description down below, and I would love to help you out further.